Agora para falar sobre experiências 3D, em três dimensões, Vlad Filipov! Ó, uma salva de palmas! Cool, so uh, uh, my name is Vlad, and in this session, uh, it's going to be an English session, so you still have time to get one of those devices to uh, probably follow me, because I'll be, might speed up this talk, we'll see. Uh, let me start my timer too, actually. Great. All right, so in this session, we're going to talk about uh, 3D graphics and uh, the web platform. Uh, some of the sort of sections in this talk, we're going to talk about WebGL. Uh, web VR, AR, and uh, a bit about WebAssembly and how that fits in uh, into how that can help us with 3D graphics uh, in uh, in the browser. A bit about me: um, you can find me at Vladikov on Twitter and GitHub. I am uh, from Toronto, Canada, um, and uh, I work at Mozilla. This was supposed to be an official photo, but this is like the uh, this is not my desk. This is not every day, but. Uh, <laughs> I work on uh, Firefox, uh, in particular I work on cloud services, uh, but I'm also very passionate about 3D graphics and uh, basically uh, 3D graphics in the browser. Uh, right when WebGL first came out, uh, I started building things, tried to participate as, in as many hackathons as possible uh, that related to uh, 3D graphics. So I built like, several games and experiences. Um, this was like in Chrome 27 days uh, I built this GitHub archive room, which would allow you to, uh, let's see if this loads up. Uh, well, let's see, uh, you could fly around and uh, explore your GitHub archive, and if you send a pull request or somebody commented on your uh, pull request, uh, you could see all that information. Uh, so, going back here, uh, I guess in this talk I wanted to, it has several goals. Um, to fir first of all inspire you to build things hopefully with uh, 3D uh, WebGL APIs and things like that, uh, but also kind of recap uh, the history of how we got where we, where we are right now with like, WebGL and uh, kind of related APIs. And uh, also to kind of look at the, so the current state of tools and also the future where we're going uh, um, in, in the next year or maybe in the next couple of years. So if we look at this, uh, this slide here, we can say, we can see that uh, WebGL kind of began. The WebGL working group started uh, started uh, working on the spec in 2009, and even before uh, WebGL was complete in uh, kind of 1.0 was complete, uh, we already had 3GS in 2010, uh, sort of usable in the browser, which was very exciting. 3GS provided a very simple API. You didn't have to learn WebGL from scratch. You kind of just you had to know JavaScript, and all you, you could just use that to build a you know make a spinning cube and go go from there. Um, once we had WebGL 1.0 in 2012, uh, Sketchfab.com came out, which is like YouTube for 3D models. And it's, if you haven't been that site, uh, it's very exciting to also like get inspired of what's possible to run in a web browser. Um, 2013, we got shadertoy.com. Uh, that's kind of a low-level uh, demo space for WebGL. And we start getting new frameworks and libraries. Uh, Pixie.js, uh, Play Canvas Engine, uh, things like that are so kind of going beyond uh, um, having more libraries just than just 3GS. And uh, the, I guess the WebGL working group, and those people related to that started, uh, you know, they were done with 1.0, so they had needed something else to do. <laughs> so they started working on the web VR uh, spec. So the web VR working group started that in 2014. Um, and a couple of years later, web VR 1.0 spec is, has been finished. Uh, if you know, if there's anything that happened in kind of WebGL related things in the browser in 2015, please let me know. That's like a lonely year. It's nothing happened, but it was a bad year for that. But. So this year, we got WebGL 2.0. Uh, in Firefox uh, earlier, like fe February and so on. Uh, Web AR working groups started working on AR because VR was completed. And other, other cool projects like React VR uh, got started. So if we look at the future, uh, this is kind of my opinion of what's going to happen. Uh, following the, the existing timeline, uh, we can see that uh, Web AR 1.0 will probably be done soon enough, which is exciting. Uh, we have uh, 3GS and other libraries will hopefully 
support uh, WebGL 2.0. Uh, Cross-browser web VR, which means uh, all devices and all the browser engines would work, uh, just, will just simply work no matter what device you have. Uh, better tooling for 3D, because we already have these new, all these new APIs and we want to build these cool experiences, um, I'm really hoping that uh, we'll get better and better tools. And also, I guess finally, like VR and AR web browsers, what's that, what that's going to look like, I'm not sure. Uh, there's some early prototypes, but it's also very, very exciting space. Uh, if you're just sort of getting started uh, with this, uh, just want to like run a cube or a sphere in a web browser, these are kind of the four contenders you can take a look at. Uh, 3JS, my, one of my favorite libraries. Uh, I, I love it. It's, it's just a great API. It's, it's been around, uh, I think, for like seven years now. Uh, it's very, it's, it's, it's amazing. Uh, Babylon JS, which started like a, uh, which was like a collaboration Microsoft project, is also very kind of alternative to 3JS. We, there's also the Play Canvas WebGL game engine. Uh, you can find it on GitHub. And also the Pixie.js uh, 2D JavaScript render, which re relies on uh, WebGL to render scenes. And that also has like, many, many projects from like, indie basic experiments to like, official, I think Disney uses that uh, for some of, their, some of their work. So just wanted to give a quick kind of three, three demos here. Um, first of all, uh, here's the here's the site I like, uh, which uh, kind of embeds this WebGL scene uh, right into like alongside a basic HTML page. Uh, in this case, you can like modify your Xbox controller uh, and uh, you know make it really ugly if you want. Uh, but this is what I kind of I like to see more of this, where the 3D experience does not take over the whole page. But you just, if, the, if you have a capable computer or a capable device, you can make this you know, spin. If you don't have a good graphics card, you just get this. Um, but I feel like sometimes developers forget that uh, you, like, you don't have to take over the whole full screen to, to build a, um, a 3D experience. Now, yeah, so this is something, uh, something I like and I'd like to see more of. Uh, and hopefully, you know, uh, we can uh, kind of push the web forward uh, with these sorts of experiences. Um, cool. So another example of something that we, got, like, as, a, as a community, got was the, some of the new projects that are built on top of existing frameworks. So for instance, uh, let me see if this loads up. Uh, uh, trying to connect. Here we go. Nope. All right. Let's try. Ooh, it's an old network. There we go. Let's try this. Uh, yep. I'm going to get on Wi-Fi really quick. Uh, okay. Sorry, Mike, I'm going to use your credentials. Uh, there you go. Perfect. Okay. Right. So there we go. So now we have these uh, new tools that uh, are built, like a lot of them are built on top of 3JS, which gives you, which give you like a, th uh, a physics engine, a nice kind of good development, development environment. This is an example of uh, whs.js, uh, whitestorm.js. And this is kind of the things what I'd, I'd love to see. Uh, well, I would, uh, if I had this when I first got started with WebGL, it'd be so great. Uh, like physics engine was one of the first things I would, I would love uh, kind of to see. Uh, but yeah, whitestorm.js gives you like, yes, <laughs> simple in usage, just like 3JS. Uh, allows you to like use Webpack, allows you to integrate with React. Uh, it's component-based, and um, if you have like a re uh, if you have a Webpack project, you can easily kind of integrate this. Uh, and there's a couple of good demos there. Right. So that's that's an example of kind of ex extended frameworks, which are great, and I hope there'll be more of them. The other tool I wanted to show you is called Ninja Dev uh, NIN. It's also on GitHub. I'll have a link to it uh, later on. Uh, but uh, this allows you to, let me check the port. There we go. This is also like a tool I was missing when I first got started with WebGL. So what I could do, uh, you know, when you first, you want to build something, you, you make sure maybe like an intro or something. Let me see if I get audio. Uh, uh, now let's see, no audio here. Uh, let me try this.
Right. So we get we have like an intro that you want to build. In this case, this is like a uh, like a four four minute thing, uh, and it allows me to view my project in full screen, what it would look like uh, in the end. Um, but also, I can jump to any point in my scene, and you can see I can see hello there, uh, right there. This tool also provides me kind of the timeline of all the scenes that I have. So if you just want to build like a cool 15 second, 30 second intro, uh, this is like this is great to have. Um, the feature that I really love uh, of this is the almost like live reload uh, that you would get with uh, uh, with something like, uh, like browser sync and so on. So for instance, I'm going to say, "Wow, live coding." I'm going to save that file. I'm going to go back to here, and I know that, uh, that my, that's my scene right there. So you can see wildlife coding is, shows up right away. And this would have saved me so many hours when I first kind of got into WebGL. In this case, I don't have to restart my tab in preview. Uh, at some point in the past, I, I was building something, and I had to refresh my browser like dozens, dozens of times, and it would actually crash. Uh, the GPU would crash because I would kept re uh, reinitializing the WebGL context. Cool. So that's NIN, and you can check it out. It's it's pretty great. And they've been really active, uh, pushing new releases. Uh, I think every every couple of weeks. Thirteen days ago, version twenty one. It's it's amazing. So yeah, these were kind of the demos that. Uh, uh, a demo of like the experiences I would love to see more of, and hopefully more of the tools in the future would be that easy to use and would really simplify our work. Um, a bit about also I want to mention WebGL2. Uh, as I said, it came out earlier this uh, this year. Uh, it's available in Firefox right now, and WebGL2 allows us to basically build graphics that's indistinguishable from like console or high-end PC gaming graphics. Uh, if you have the time later on, at Google for after the flood demo, which kind of provides you this, uh, uh, you can see like these the detailed models, the the, the clouds and the re reflections, uh, this HDR rendering and uh, all these effects. That's all powered by WebGL to uh, to yeah, and uh, very exciting because we can start building things that. Uh, you can go to a normal person and ask them, "Is this what is it, do you think this is running in? And they probably won't say the web browser, but you can surprise them or something. <clears throat> cool. So let's see. So the next thing I also want to mention, uh, VR, uh, virtual reality. And that's been getting popular again uh, in the last uh, couple of years. Uh, we got new hardware. We got new stores, SDKs, and so on. And uh, we still kind of have the same issues and kind of a bit of roadblocks with VR, where yeah, everybody's got their own store, everybody's got, got their own SDK, um, and also they have trouble like sharing, uh, sharing the experiences with uh, they built, and also experimenting more. So this is where the web uh, and the web platform can come in and kind of help with that. So you can you know share links, you can use the web engine to to build things and experiment. And uh, this is where WebVR uh, will hopefully kind of push, help, help v make VR like a, a thing that uh, you, know, you can make money with and not just uh, kind of fool around. <laughs> so WebVR, basically it's a JavaScript AI that uh, allows you to uh, create this immersive 3D experience. Um, and you can see this is a screenshot from WebVR.rocks website uh, where you can check sort of the compatibility layer. Um, and as I mentioned in the timeline, View. I'm really hoping, like, you can see some uh, red X's still, like, next to Android and so on. They're still, like, still in the works, and hopefully in the future, it would, it's all, all going to be green, and uh, it's all just going to work. Uh, and you can see uh, Firefox 55 on Stable uh, recently got, uh, just this month, August 8, uh, we, uh, Mozilla shipped uh, uh, WebVR support in the Stable browser, and also the Mac, Mac support as, as well. So to make it even simpler, I mean, the web platform already makes it really easy to share and kind of hack around with these experiments. Uh, uh, Mozilla has the sponsors this project called A-Frame. It's open source. And we're going to have a talk on this uh, once I'm done in like 15 minutes or so uh, about A-Frame. Uh, and that's also a very exciting project, v very easy. If you don't even, 
like I showed you the four frameworks earlier. If you don't want to look at that, uh, A-Frame, uh, if, you, if, you like, you if you can write HTML, you can, you can use A-Frame. And I think uh, we did a workshop earlier two days ago. And in less than like 10 or 15 minutes, you, people started building things that they were, they were really surprised how easy it is to get started. If you kind of want to see the, uh, the most complex WebVR experiments, uh, there's webvrexperiments.com. Uh, all you need is a cardboard uh, to try those out. And and the phone, yeah, device. <laughs> and uh, I guess one thing to mention: if you want to either get inspired or get help, uh, there's a WebVR Slack that you can join. Um, the the Rocks channel is like the WebVR Rocks uh, side of things, but the the WebVR Slack is also very exciting. Every day there's new experiments and people share what they build. Uh, before we get to the next part, uh, I wanted to show a quick demo here of of something where you can you can get away from the browser and still use the browser APIs uh, in uh, in like you can push your experiments out to stores. For instance, this is the Steam VR store, and you can see there is a in the middle there. There's like a game of JavaScript, and that icon sits alongside other games built in Unity and Unreal Engine. So to the end user, you you don't see the difference, right? The only thing like I'm telling you that it says JavaScript in there. Uh, <laughs> So you can t sort of tell that game is built with JavaScript, but the end user will like will not know, and they will still get the same experience as a game with like built with Unity or so. So this is built. I'm recorded recorded this from my desktop view, and this is what the user would see. Same thing. They would get a loading screen just like any other game. And uh, I know everybody's passionate about JavaScript in this room. You can have your own personal JavaScript room with the JavaScript carpet. Uh, you can like look around, and it's running at 90 FPS. Uh, and you know you can start building a project, and you will not, you might not even release it uh, as a website or a web app. You can package it and uh, try to promote it this way, where it publish it to a store, and uh, just uh, kind of that's that's where the end user looks for uh, like high-end experiments. Cool. That's uh, so we talk about VR. Uh, I want to also mention AR. So with with VR, we can kind of trans transport into these JavaScript rooms or like cool experience, experience, experiences. Uh, with AR, we can bring uh, some of the digital objects or digital models into like the real world. So that's kind of in the past year, there's been uh, kind of also uh, an interesting topic. And let me restart this. Uh, let's see. There we go. And so, there are like you can run uh, some demos on like on the latest iPhones with AR, and it's still the spec is still in the works. So it's 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 not done yet, but it doesn't mean that you can't get started building things. So you can uh, there's a there's a library called ARJS which actually works uh, with AFrame, uh, where you can start building things. And right now it uses these markers. I have uh, a few of them right here, and. The true, I think, the true AR would be uh, once those markers go away. But that doesn't mean you should wait for that. Like you can start building things and see, experiment and see where that goes. Um, in this example here, this is built uh, with 3GS. So if you just, if you can add a cube in a 3GS scene, uh, like that's all you need from the the WebGL part, and then you include the ARJS library uh, to uh, to test it out and see how that goes. So we're going to do a demo. Uh, I'm going to Andre. You can try to go this to, your, to this URL if you have an Android phone or a computer. Uh, it's ar1.vf.io, and just raise your hand, and Andre will give you a marker to try it out. And uh, I will also need two volunteers uh, to come on stage here. Raise your hand also if you want to come on stage. Okay, one. Uh, sure, let's go. Come in here. All right. And I'm also going to load up this uh, this demo here. All right, there we go. All right, come in, come in here. Okay, and then we got another one. All right. All right. So you're gonna let's see. You can hold this, uh, and maybe where's the other? Okay, here we go. You can hold. You can hold this. No, let's give it this one. Just two. Just two is fine. 
Uh, take R, yeah. Okay, and you can take these two. There we go. So we're gonna do a, let's see. Okay, we're gonna do an educational experience. So imagine you're like, I don't know, at a school and you wanna teach somebody about the solar system, right? Um, let me see if I can go to this mic. Maybe, yeah, there we go. All right, let's see. So come, come closer to me here and here. So we're gonna try, we're gonna try to see if that works. So try to hold it with, uh, outside the square. So maybe hold, uh, there we go, there, and then the bottom. Perfect, okay, there we go. So we got maybe a bit more space, there we go. So we got the, we got the two planet. so we got the sun and planet Earth. Uh, and we're gonna look at here, oh, we got, okay, I need more space here. Okay, we got Sa Saturno and Jupiter. There it is, oh, that's another sun. Okay, let's see, where's the, I think maybe this is Jupiter, there we go. So it's a bit far away, but uh, uh, maybe come closer a bit. Let's see, there we go. So. We're gonna try to fix this. We only have four objects, so but we're gonna try to fix this and rearrange this so this is in the proper order. Uh, so let's see, the, our volunteers. Let's make it from left to right. How would things look in the solar system? You just had these four objects. Uh, let's see. All right, great. All right, let's see. Um, nah, okay. So you got the sun over there. Let's see. Let's try to fix this. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is a lot of pressure here. Okay. Um, okay, so you put... Okay. Uh, let's see. I think we got... Okay, from right to left, right? That's what we're going for here? All right. So just... Yeah, so uh, move your finger from, from the square there. Uh, a bit... Okay, there we go. So we got the sun, earth, and... All right. Is this, is this correct? No. Okay. Okay, what, you, what did you do there? Okay, you switched it while I wasn't looking. Great. There we go, that's just the correct, there we go. So, we're gonna have a demo of like, all the planets at the Firefox booth in a bit. I have all the markers, but this is kind of a quick experience, uh, just kind of a quick demo for this, uh, for this AR experience. And uh, thank you so much, volunteers. I will give you some, thank you, thank you. Uh, one sec, one sec. I'll give you some gifts because you were so brave. Hold on, hold on, here you go. Uh, this is for you, uh, it's for you. And for you, there we go. They passed the exam. They deserve, uh, I don't know, deserve some gifts. There we go. Great. <laughs> Great work. I'm, I'm, I'm happy with that result. <laughs> uh, right. Let's see if I have anything else to say about uh, AR really quick. Um, Right, so yeah, as you saw there, you can start building things, you can uh, make it more complex, uh, build, uh, uh, you know, make like meteors and stuff like that, and uh, this, this tech is only gonna get better, um, and ask me if you have any questions about it uh, later on. Cool, and uh, one last thing, I guess, we were gonna talk about WebAssembly, and for those who don't know, I think we, we had a talk about this yesterday, uh, but just to remind, uh, to remind you, WebAssembly is like a low-level bytecode format uh, for uh, browser client-side scripting. Currently, it supports C, C++, and Rust. And uh, it allows us to sort of offload uh, uh, some of the intensive tasks, CPU tasks, that JavaScript has to deal with, offload those into um, this low-level format. Um, so there are a lot of good uh, kind of intro articles about WebAssembly about how great it is and so on, but uh, I, I was trying to find an example of how realistically this would work out uh, if you would want to like, integrate WebAssembly into like, your own either production application or your own app. Uh, and uh, let me get this demo running. Uh, so I got it on port 8080. And this is gonna be the visualization of the after party today at uh, 11 p.m. So, uh, and I guess there's going to be some uh, music there. I imagine it's going to be dubstep. So we're going to, let's see. So we're going to do. We'll take it. So that's, that's going to be, that's the demo of the uh, party today. And I, I imagine there's going to be more people. So we can do, uh, more people are going to show up. So let's do 30 people. And we can start seeing, uh, 
in our FPS counter there in the top left corner, it's not looking good. It's basically running the graphics in, uh, oh yeah, sorry, a royalty-free dubstep. I must show the credits. That's the credits for the dubstep. It's royalty-free. All right. I did it. OK, so back to this. We have our low FPS demo. And this is not cool. This is not good dancing. Uh, it's running 8 FPS. And you're asking me, like, why are you showing me this? This is not. I thought WebAssembly is supposed to uh, uh, make things fast. So before I get to the WebAssembly part, I guess to describe what is happening in this demo, every character uh, is animated. And it's used as a concept called skeletal animation. And which means uh, I have certain, like I have a, this 3D model and it has certain points which I can move around uh, in space, and then the whole body reacts to that movement of that point. So the uh, so the the shoulder uh, kind of moves uh, related to that point that I'm moving, and every character is animated in its own, in its own way. This one is doing some crazy stuff just now. So, <clears throat> right. So we can tr uh, let's go back to the. Let's see if I can. We're going to turn on some dubstep here. And uh, w what we're going to do is we're, we're going to wait for the dubstep drop and turn on WebAssembly. Uh, and you can see. So you can see I'm actually back to 60 FPS once I turn WebAssembly on. And uh, you can see I'm at like 30 characters. I can go like to 60 characters, and I'm still I have a really smooth experience. I am at 43 FPS there in the top left top left corner. Um, so a bit about this demo, I guess. I, I wouldn't dare to switch back to JavaScript here because it might freeze my presentation. So uh, just gotta be careful there. But this is kind of an example where uh, initially you would have an app uh, that was something like this, and you like you built your JavaScript app, you ship it, and then somebody like it's like, I want to have 100 dancers, and they're like, uh, it report, and then it reports 1 FPS. So you got to fix it. So what do you have, right? So here's an example here. Um, uh, so you imagine you wrote some algorithm for this animation. And it's here, it's, here it's on the left, uh, using TypeScript. Everybody knows the TypeScript syntax, because there was just a presentation on that. And um, we can take a look here. Uh, let's see. Uh, we have our. Uh, skeleton animation function, and I can comment it out and just say, you know, change some code, ratio 20. Oh, it's actually, I'm going to, okay, ratio 1. And if I would save that, uh, you'd probably have like Webpack running in the background. Uh, let's see, I'm going to do npm run. Uh, I can't remember what the command was. Uh, let's see, probably npm run Webpack. There we go. And it would compile some files and will include this algorithm that I made a change to. Uh, if I go back here, I'll refresh this demo. Let's see if it applied the change. Uh, let's see. So I think uh, you can see they sort of started shaking a bit more. Uh, that's because I changed the algorithm. And they're kind of moving around more left to right. Uh, so this is kind of the regular. This is what you have in your app right now. And you notice the FPS drops. So what you basically can do is you can say, OK, I'm going to rewrite this algorithm uh, with uh, C or C++. And you can see here, it's on the right. This is the, the, the C file here. And it has the same function name. So you have uh, uh, get transform at time, get transform at time in uh, C++. And I can, oh, same thing. I can do float uh, ratio 1, uh, comment this out, save it. And in this case, uh, I would be. Um, uh, I would I would have to build it as well, like very similar to Webpack, uh, where you can uh, we can take a look here at the package JSON. The same way we run Webpack here, we can run the mscript and SDK and compile this file from our C++ file into uh, into this Wasm module, and that Wasm module can now replace uh, a bun like a bit of your code in your in your uh, JavaScript code base with this Wasm file. Uh, and yeah, from there on, you can it, same way you would refresh the browser or the library load it, and you would get uh, you would get your WebAssembly module uh, loaded, and you get the smooth experience there. And thanks for Cameron Peterson for putting that demo. I think it's one of the most powerful demos there is. I have this slide uh, about how to get the SDK. Uh, you can take a look at it later. 
And if you want to read more about w uh, WASM WebAssembly, uh, there's a Mozilla blog and also the .org website. If you want to start building these modules that are kind of optimized pieces of JavaScript uh, in into these low-level languages, WASM init is a great project uh, to get started. Uh, lastly, uh, actually, let's see. Oh, one thing I want to mention, which is our recent news. So I showed you this experience where um, uh, you, you know, I have Webpack, Webpack and the uh, mscripten SDK. Um, good news is uh, Mozilla is sponsoring. It's giving $125,000 to Webpack to make WebAssembly like a first-class citizen, first-class support in Webpack. So you it make it really easy for you to substitute this like slow JavaScript code, slow JavaScript algorithms with uh, these low-level low level pieces. Uh, and lastly, uh, also, if you use tools like Unity or Unreal Engine, you can uh, you can also use WebAssembly in there, you, where you can target. You can just basically check a checkbox, and Unity will export um, a WASM module if you're building like a game or experience, and use WebAssembly that way. So those tools already already have experimental support for WebAssembly. Great, uh, that's it for me. I'm right almost on time. Uh, if you need the slides, uh, they're available at vf.io slash 3dweb. Uh, you can see this reference uh, list in those slides as well. And uh, thank you so much, Brazil. It was great. Uh, obrigado.